This device is an oxidator and it can flood your tank with oxygen, but that is by far not the only advantage of such an oxidator. And in this video I explain what other pros and cons it has, how it works and what the best use cases are. So stay tuned. An oxidator is a device that releases pure oxygen into the water without creating surface agitation. Unlike traditional air pumps, it works without electricity. Instead, it uses hydrogen peroxide, which is broken down into oxygen and water by a catalyst. This process improves oxygen levels in the aquarium without driving out CO2 making it also perfect for planted tanks and a good choice for keeping animals which prefer a high level of oxygen in the aquarium. I am using the products from Döchting. The video is not sponsored, I use the products because I like them and they are the most widely used in Germany. But don't worry, the oxidators are also available outside of Germany. You can choose from the following sizes or models. Söchting Oxidator Mini for nano aquariums up to 60 liters, Söchting Oxidator D for small aquariums up to 100 liters, Söchting Oxidator A for small aquariums up to 800 liters, Söchting Oxidator W for ponds up to 4000 liters, and Söchting Oxidator W Maxi for ponds up to 40,000 liters. As you can see, there is something available for practically every aquarium size and you can even supply your garden pond with oxygen if you want. I have variant D in my hand, so let's take a look at how to assemble an oxidator and how it works. Setting up an oxidator is super easy. Remove the acrylic container from the ceramic part and fill the container with the oxidator fluid. You can buy the oxidator fluid from your dealer. The hydrogen peroxide mixture is available in various concentrations. 3%, 4.9%, 6% and 12% and in different sizes. I normally use a 6% mixture. Don't lose the small catalyst while filling. Close the container with the lid and position it in the ceramic part. If you do it this way, make sure that the container is not too full, otherwise the excess liquid will splash out and can also hit your eyes. Alternatively, position the lid in the ceramic part first and close the container with the pre-assembled unit. Now you can place the oxidator anywhere in the aquarium, it will start working as soon as it is under the water. When the liquid is used up, it must be refilled. Maintenance is minimal, just refill the hydrogen peroxide regularly and occasionally clean the catalyst. This is particularly necessary if the oxidator has been standing in water for a while and biofilm has formed on the catalyst. This noticeably reduces the performance. Ok guys, now you have seen how to start up an oxidator, let's take a look at how it actually works. Oxygen radicals are constantly split off from the hydrogen peroxide in the glass container by the catalyst. This creates a slowly but steadily growing oxygen bubble in the glass which pushes the hydrogen peroxide out through a small opening in the cap. The catalyst is not consumed, so the catalyst stones do not need to be replaced. The ceramic base also acts as a catalyst where the leaked hydrogen peroxide reacts to water and an oxygen radical. Most of the oxygen produced in this way dissolves immediately in the water. There is very little or no bubble formation. The oxygen release depends on the temperature and concentration of the solution. The higher the concentration, the more oxygen is released. The more catalysts or the larger the catalyst, the faster the liquid is consumed. Higher temperatures also accelerate the consumption of the solution. If you also want to use a Söchting oxidator, I recommend that you always use the original fluid to ensure optimum function. 
We have now talked about the commissioning and the function of an oxidator, but what effect does it have on the water? Simply put, more activated oxygen, which has several pros. Improved oxygen supply. The first advantage is that the oxidator provides a steady release of oxygen, which is especially helpful during hot summer months or in densely stocked tanks. Warm water can absorb less oxygen than cold water and if the stocking level in the aquarium is still quite high, this can quickly lead to a shortage, especially at night. Activated oxygen is oxygen atoms that are loosely bound to water. These diffuse much faster than normal dissolved oxygen. This is also due to the fact that the oxygen atoms always strive for maximum distance to neighboring atoms. This is why it also reaches flow-free corners and niches in the aquarium, penetrates the substrate and makes it an ideal biological filter. No surface agitation. Unlike air stones, an oxidator doesn't cause CO2 loss, making it great for planted tanks. Other types of oxygen supply, such as the use of an air stone with an air pump, often result in surface agitation. This expels valuable CO2, which is particularly important for heavily planted aquariums. The CO2 is urgently needed by the plants and is not available in sufficient quantities in many aquariums anyway. This problem is easily avoided with an oxidator. Silent operation. Another advantage is that no humming air pump is required. Guys, I know you all know that sound. The oxygen supply can be significantly improved completely silently and wirelessly and without the need for electricity. This makes the oxidator ideal for use in living rooms or bedrooms. Better water quality. An oxidator can also help reduce organic waste, inhibit algae growth and support the breakdown of harmful substances. The activated oxygen is very reactive and also reacts directly with contaminants, bacteria and other substances and oxidizes them. This can significantly reduce the bacterial load in the tank. And that is probably one of the biggest advantages of the oxidator. But the oxygen also oxidizes harmful substances such as nitrite and hydrocarbons to mostly harmless end products such as nitrite, water and carbon dioxide even without bacterial activity. By increasing the redox potential of the water through the activated oxygen, algae growth can also be effectively reduced. Where is light, there is usually shadow. What are the disadvantages of such an oxidator? Ongoing costs. One disadvantage is the running costs of the oxidator as the hydrogen peroxide has to be replenished continuously. This can add up over time and is generally more expensive than running a small air pump. Just as an indication, my mini oxidator in the Sulawesi Aquarium has to be refilled with hydrogen peroxide every 10 days on average. Attention in mature tanks. If you place the oxidator in older tanks which have a lot of mud and rotten material, the opposite can happen to what you actually want to achieve. A lot of CO2 will be produced. This will last until the activated oxygen has decomposed all the materials. You should keep an eye on the CO2 level, especially in aquariums with few plants in which there are no or few consumers. So guys, now we know the advantages and disadvantages of an oxidator. But does it make sense to have one in every aquarium? I don't think so. In aquariums with lots of plants and not excessively high stocking levels, I don't see any need. But of course, it doesn't harm here either. 
On the other hand, an oxidator can be a real enrichment in heavily stocked aquariums or tanks with high temperatures or very few or no plants at all. The oxidator ensures a continuous, absolutely noiseless supply of oxygen and also improves the water quality thanks to the activated oxygen. An oxidator can also help to cure bacterial infections in the aquarium. I mainly use the oxidator in shrimp aquariums, as some shrimp species are very sensitive to low oxygen levels. I particularly like to use it in Sulawesi aquariums because many Sulawesi shrimps have to be kept at very high temperatures above 27 degrees Celsius and these tanks have little or no plants. In addition to that, these shrimps place very high demands on the water quality. In my opinion, this environment is the ideal use case for an oxidator. An oxidator can therefore have many positive effects on an aquarium and continuously supply it with valuable oxygen. However, there are many more reasons why shrimps in particular can die than just a lack of oxygen. If you want to know what these are, watch this video next. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.